Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending where you are in the world. I am Francesco from Italy, and I am a product manager for Spotify, uh, working as part of the platform developer experience tribe called PDX, uh, uh, whose mission is to speed up Spotify by providing teams with a simple, consistent, and delightful experience. In this um, event, in this conversation, we will talk more about developer experience and how to define and classify the developer experience, uh, the main challenges and uh, risks uh, connected also to the business. We will discuss about targeting the developers and the techies. We will see the difference between the two concepts. And we will uh, also touch the topic and the role of, uh, uh, of the role played by open source uh, in all of this. As part of my daily work, uh, I am a product manager for a specific tooling uh, that is called Backstage that is used by thousands of Spotify developers to create the app that you all know, and not only that. And it is also used by dozens of thousands, by, um, of, but most probably hundreds of thousands of developers uh, as part of small, medium, large organizations across, across all the industries, continents, and the technologies. In one of my previous positions at Alfresco, I have been also uh, the product manager for the so-called Alfresco application development platform used by developers to create applications on top of the services through an open source framework using Angular. This, that is uh, one of the most up-to-date technologies to create uh, uh, end-user applications. And I have always been an open source enthusiast, being a former software engineer and a consultant, a developer advocate, and an author of uh, uh, books of, for developers and video courses teaching about development. And if you think that I have done a lot of things, it tells you a lot about my age, honestly. This is to say that developers are important to me. I continue to proudly define myself as a developer because I truly believe that development is a great art and a very creative job, when done properly, of course. But developers are, are not uh, important only to me. They are very much important for a lot of the existing companies because they are helping the business, and this is pretty obvious. In this conversation, we will treat this concept that developers are important for the business as an assumption, as I believe, because it will deserve a dedicated conversation that is slightly out of topic for this content, it is more a purely business uh, uh, speech and conversation. Instead, I would like to keep the conversation on the developer experience topic. It's very close. It's very much closer on what I like and where I'm working with, of course. Because developers are important, the business wants the developer to be faster, more effective, and innovator. Uh, all of this uh, uh, to be with one purpose in mind, to be ahead of the competition. This is not a new statement. This has, this has been valid for some decades, probably since when the job of uh, coders uh, exists, uh, when the developers start to become uh, uh, professional and IT professionals. But developers and development are pretty broad and generic terms that evolved in the past years, and in today's day, they look slightly different from what it was in the early 2000s or simply 10 years ago. Developers are, are different in these days, and development is very much different. First of all, uh, we have mm, very different types of developers. We have front-end developers, back-end developers, full-stack developers, meaning about developers concentrated on the end-user experience, on the back-end, so the service uh, creation and development, or both of, of the two. We have mobile developers, uh, that is, again, a slightly different expertise and, and, de and development, uh, um, yeah, development expertise. We have quality assurance testers to test the quality of what is given in the hands of the, of the, of the users. We have data scientists. They are not purely developers, but they are hacking code. They are developing algorithm and, and portion of codes uh, exactly in the same way that the the, the pure developers are doing. The, this, is, this is very much an interesting conversation because uh, this is, I mean, we cannot classify data scientists as pure developers. And I, 
I hope no one will be offended by this. And this is the reason why I often uh, uh, discuss that, I mean, in the talking about the developer experience, we prefer to discuss that we target the techies. Uh, that is a broader term than the developer. One disclaimer is that from here ahead, I will continue to use the word developer, but in reality, I'm, I'm talking about techies. And I apologize if someone will recognize, won't recognize herself or, or himself in this definition. DevOps is not necessarily a, a developer, a type of developer, so a, a, a specific type of IT professional. It's more a methodology. But in some cases, uh, this is used also to indicate what is in the past, where the CIS have been. And, uh, and again, it's good also to highlight this. Also, security expert is very much important. In terms of type of development, of course, there is a match with the front-end development for end UIs, back-end for services and APIs, and of course, the methodology of, the, of DevOps. But let me uh, also highlight that something that I find very interesting in the market is that uh, when we target developers, often we target the developer internal to an organization as part of the core business, but it's very much important also the external developer, third-party developers, Developers, they are uh, the, our customers' developers, uh, our partner developers, someone that is acting outside of the core business of the company, but is, but is uh, working with our services, our technology, our, our um, tooling. All of them, uh, all the developers are dealing in some extent with uh, several different many different tools. Uh, again, if you are not an expert, probably these are complex names, uh, in some cases known, in some other cases not known. But the main concept here is that tooling is very much important and that every developer needs to deal with many, many, many different tools. The emerging architecture, uh, architectures are simply making this uh, challenge bigger. Because if you think about the microservice world, something that is a buzz world, so uh, in, in, in the modern architecture, instead of having one single monolith, one single application, one service is split in many, um, sometimes those and sometimes hundreds of uh, microservices, and every service needs to be developed and probably maintained. Platformization is also the push of the market in uh, looking at every service as a, a sort of platform. So exposing API, exposing services. This is also something that is making all of this even more complex. Let me summarize this. I think that I think I think it's pretty tangible that uh, developing in today's world is more powerful than ever. But a very, very complex. So if you, I mean, if you are experienced enough uh, in development, you know that developing in years ago was uh, amazing, like it is today, but it, it was less uh, deep in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in content, in tooling. Uh, today is extremely powerful. You can do a lot of amazing things, but it's, it's also very, very complex. And the complexity is exactly something that I would like to focus uh, uh, the conversation at this point. At this point. Um, and if you are an experienced developer, okay, this is hard, this is, this is challenging, but I mean, you can count on your experience and your knowledge. But if you are a junior developer, this is, the, in some cases, can be really, really, really complex. Complexity apart, another historical behavior related to the developers and the development is about the obvious confidence the developer have with coding and every and very technical tooling. By nature, a developer is intrigued by tools like the so-called terminal. This is the picture showing exactly what a terminal look like looks like. And if you want to make a developer really excited, provided him or her with a, the so-called CLI, this is an example of CLI, where you can raise complex or simple commands uh, exactly in a, in a similar way uh, closer to the source code. Developers are happy to be considered uh, cl very close and to, to work and act very close to the code because this is exactly where they feel at home. This is exactly where they feel they succeed in their mission. This is about controlling the machine. Uh, 
okay, I'm going a little bit psychological and philosophical. I won't go more than this. But the concept in that is that developers are comfortable in working as extension of the code uh, and they feel comfortable in going deeper in the technical parts. Of course, this is not so, let me say, human. And so it is something that is attractive for them, but needs to be properly, it, 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 it introduced some complexity, of course. And if you mix this uh, complexity with a relevant number of tooling and methodology that we discussed before, and uh, uh, and if you can see, and it, you can see here summarized in one picture. Uh, by the way, this picture is, is showing the different numbers of technologies that are used only under the radar of the CNCF uh, foundation. So this is a subset of the existing tooling uh, uh, supporting the developer experience. And so if you, if you, I mean, something that of course it's easy to, to see here is that uh, if you mix the need of a developer to work uh, uh, in detail and deep in the, in the, in the tooling, and if you see at the higher incredibly high uh, number of tooling. You can imagine the, the, the level of the challenge and also another challenge that is part of the, of the, mm, of the developer experience in, to, in today's world that is about the fragmentation, of course. Uh, that is uh, something that is really affecting the experience of the developers in today's day. Mm-hmm. Now that we have seen uh, mm, that we started from the problem, <clears throat> And we have seen uh, two of the bigger challenges from a development from a developer perspective. We will elaborate a little bit more later on. Let's uh, uh, discuss a little bit about the um, uh, an initial definition of the developer experience. At this point, it should be clear that the developer experience is the collection of tasks, feelings, behavior, reactions, and actions in general done by developers in techies. Uh, to do their work and reach the, their goals. Uh, just to, uh, to be clear, this is not an official de- definition of developer exp- experience because an official definition of developer exp- experience doesn't exist yet. Uh, I'm quoting here, I'm reporting to, I'm submitting to your attention here a couple of different uh, um, definitions. As you can see, they're not extremely different. different. Uh, Microsoft One is more closer to the tooling, uh, but not only about tooling. Uh, The other definition is closer to the experience. So it's something that is literally going beyond the tooling. But uh, I mean, the important thing to uh, recognize here is that there isn't a unique definition. Uh, It is about uh, um, um, there are I mean, different points of view that we can uh, uh, discuss about the developer experience. And uh, in some examples, the developer experience definition is more on uh, the, again, experience, and other cases is more on the tooling. This is what you will see as part of the different articles, literature, books, uh, and solutions as well. Um, just to share uh, an example of this, uh, uh, probably a, a little bit on the edge. Let me share what I have discussed with uh, one contact in my network that is uh, heading the developer experience for a company pretty structured with more than 800 of developers. And he's saying that developer experience is also about the chair and the desk that a developer is using. It's about the environment, the culture where the developer act and work. I tend to agree. I think it's, I think it's right. Developer experience is not about tooling only. It's about also, I mean, how to uh, engage the developer to reduce the frustration of something that is not happening the way that it is expected, how to foster the innovation. Uh, But of course, uh, we need to uh, keep uh, the um, uh, feet on the ground, of course, and being practical. Uh, But again, Mm, it's a good point. Uh, developer experience uh, is a broad concept and uh, a unique and agreed definition that doesn't exist yet. Like, for example, it exists for the user experience. 
Before going ahead with the conversation, let me discuss uh, uh, about some uh, obvious statements and questions that can easily come into your mind. Probably you're already questioned about yourself. But okay, but despite the fact that uh, maybe we don't have, or you don't have as part of your organization, a developer experience uh, in clear, uh, but is it? Is are we already doing developer experience? So the fact that we have developers means that we are doing something with and for the developers. Uh, are we doing the right thing for them? Uh, is it now more of a buzzword of, of a need in the market because of the complexity? So why this is now is more important? All of those are good questions. And yes, developer experience is not a new concept. And we have always done um, the developer experience approach and, 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 and help the, the developers in doing better their job. Since the very, com very first computer were working in a room, uh, for example, in something like that, uh, the conversation about to improve the developer experience was a thing. But in today's world, there is a... Uh, something that is more important uh, probably because uh, the challenges of the developer experiencing is uh, challenging also the business, is affecting the business. And so this is why developer experience is assuming a relevant importance in these days. Just to give you an idea how important it is for the business, uh, the developer experience, let me share some examples that I'm hearing from uh, several companies, including Spotify, but not only Spotify. Because, uh, mm, so first of all, uh, uh, let me share an example. This is, this is a Spotify example, for example. In 2015, uh, Spotify was becoming uh, a company with uh, thousands of developers, starting from hundreds of developers. And because of the, of the relevant number of hires, um, and because of the microservice ecosystem that it was uh, uh, pretty complex, uh, at that time and in general, the number of onboarding days uh, that we were measuring through the um, a metric that is uh, telling about how many days was needed to raise the first 10 PRs, the number literally exposed to 60 days. And this is honestly was challenging the business because it was slowing down the business a lot. Uh, talking with many companies, they are, they are going from a monolith architecture to a microservice architecture with many services. One of the most recurrent questions is, uh, who is owning some kind of service? If we have an incident, like for example, long 4 j if we have a problem or a, or, or a vulnerability is, is discovered as part of one service, who is owning that? If we have to decide uh, where to change all the log 4 j versions as part of the core business of my company, where I can find this kind of information. Uh, something that is challenging every developer is about writing documentation, how we can improve the developer experience in writing technical documentation, because this is affecting the business, because we, we don't have documented software, we have a, a not well-maintained software, we have, a, we have a, a low quality software, and this is affecting the business, of course. Uh, this is another topic because if you have to create a new service from scratch or something from scratch, you cannot wait for weeks. It is, it is most of the time to, in today's day. All of this is, get, is getting bigger and bigger and bigger at scale. So if you have to onboard hundreds of, of developers per year, or if you have to manage dozens of thousands of services uh, in, in, and, and, and you, you need to understand the ownership. This is absolutely affecting the business more than, of course, the lower numbers. Something that is challenging also the company in facing the developer experience is also something vital for the global, for the final goal of the business, innovation. And innovation is closer also to the digital transformation and things like that. We don't need to explain the importance of innovation uh, from a competitive advantage. I'm, I'm talking about the business. And in development and technology, innovation comes also from the autonomy of the developers to uh, experiment, try, learn, and maybe learn because they failed. And of course, improve in the next iteration. Developers want to 
try new things, be free to try new things. And this is in clear contradictions on uh, constraints and maybe long process that some kind of uh, companies are forced to take. If you think about areas like public sector, pharmaceutical, banks, insurance, uh, I mean, uh, the, the innovation is, is vital, but it's equally important also having an understanding of the policies, of the of the rules, of the of the compliance, of and, and things like that. So, uh, autonomy is very much a need from a business perspective, but at the same time is also a challenge because uh, autonomy uh, is frequently connected also to the concept of chaos, of course. Let's summarize a little bit where what we discussed until now. That it's a pretty big chunk of uh, uh, space dedicated to the challenges and the challenge of the developer experience. First of all, we, we, we uh, define the developer experience, but we discuss also the challenge of the complexity. So tools are very powerful, but complex in these days. They are also very fragmented because we have many of them. And there is also the need of the autonomy from a business perspective. All of this uh, making bigger as a challenges at scale. Let's move a little bit ahead discussing about the solution. And most in particular, uh, what I would like to discuss with you is what possible solution look like, what, they are, what is happening in the market and what we are seeing and I am seeing as part of the evolution of the market exactly in this space. First of all, the immediate reaction uh, uh, where almost everyone seems to agree about the complexity. So the fact that developers like the, uh, to go deep uh, at, the, at the heart of the, of the technical solution, something that we want absolutely to preserve and to provide to the developers. But at the same time, something that we want to provide in the hands of the developer as an option is also something more closer to a human experience. So uh, in this example, you can see on the left, uh, the terminal in the way that developers love. And on the right stuff, uh, on the right side, uh, you see a portal, in this case, it's backstage, one of the product, the product where I'm working with, uh, where you can uh, uh, do, reach exactly the same goal but instead of having a CLI, having uh, an interface, having an interface with fields and buttons that are more suitable for a human. So the principle behind this, of course, is not to replace the CLI with an interface because developers love the, C the, the interface, but to provide an alternative. So instead of uh, uh, forcing them to act with the CLI only, also providing alternatives uh, to uh, make simpler and more closer to the human experience, uh, something that is closer to the, to, the, to the source code and to the developer experience. Uh, in, in, fragmentation is allowed concern uh, as we discussed in the past uh, and in the past uh, slides and companies, but it would be better to say developers are challenged by the need to jump uh, from one tool to another because uh, the tools are not talking one each other. Uh, as, you ex as an example, you need to go to the terminal to manage all the Git, uh, uh, all the Git stuff. Then you need to go to Terraform because you want to see the pipeline. Then you need to go to AWS because you uh, don't. You have to see the deployment and the cloud environment. Then you need to go to the test, uh, uh, oh, to, to Confluence to see the, the technical documentation. So in these four tasks, you have touched four different tooling, um, and uh, all of them uh, with different end user experience. Uh, uh, instead of uh, going in one single pane of glass in one single place where you can find all the information that you can, you may want. Uh, companies would like to, uh, instead of providing 
exactly to go beyond the fragmentation experience. Companies would like to provide a unified experience, often connected to the concept of soul services, provisioning of resources and solutions, rather than being forced to go here and there in the organization to, to receive what they need. The soul services need is very much connected to the autonomy topic. And uh, in this space, rules and constraints are definitely enemies. But at the same time, not having the control of what teams are doing is a relevant concern, especially in highly regulated industries like banks, insurance, pharmaceutical, etc. This is why providing developers with self-service tooling where they can have a small, medium or big level of autonomy in deciding what to do and how to do it, it seems to be a loud request for many companies and good offering in the market. As part of this, there is a concept of guiding the developer instead of ruling them. Related to the challenge of the autonomy, there is also the implication of the standardization. So uh, every company needs, needs wants also to provide guidance to developers to do things properly, accordingly with the policies of the company, with the best practices of the companies, uh, instead of uh, constraining them to say, yes, you're allowed to do this or not, you're not allowed to do that. Again, uh, in terms of solution, the push and the trend of the market is, again, is to react with the ease of use uh, uh, to the complexity, uh, but guaranteeing the flexibility because we want to leave the autonomy uh, to the developers to do the things in the way they want, also going deep to a terminal level to do the stuff. The, the providing unification views, so single pane of glass uh, to do the various things, uh, um, instead of uh, forcing them to the fragmentation. And uh, uh, to guarantee the, the autonomy, uh, provide a guidance instead of uh, uh, blockers or long processes to, again, to unblock uh, the creativity and uh, innovation as part of the businesses of the company. So now that we discuss a little bit about where the possible solutions are and, and what, the product are, what the products are introducing uh, as part of the developer experience, what the companies are doing. So first of all, uh, a common reaction of many companies that I'm talking to, first of all, they are Think, seriously thinking to build a dedicated teams uh, dedicated to the developer exp experience. Developer experience teams are often small, between two and five-ish. Um, in some cases, they are bigger than this uh, if they want to cover and they need to cover also some operational tasks, like, for example, maintaining a pipeline and things like that. Often they are originated by the software architect teams uh, or DevOps teams. And they often start from uh, operational problems. For example, I want to provide the best pipeline uh, and agreed pipeline uh, to a complex organization. But soon they land to a broader developer experience because developer experience is, is broader than that, in, in, in the, exactly in the way that we discuss uh, in the initial part of this, of this conversation. After the developer experience team is created, one of the initial challenges is about the tooling. Honestly, uh, real tooling for to address all of this concern, or at least unique tooling, are not defined. And uh, one of the bigger concerns that I'm hearing from the companies exactly in adopting this, this tooling is that they want to... Uh, um, avoid uh, a trap. Because honestly, uh, one uh, interesting thought is that uh, we are talking about complexity, we are talking about fragmentation, and then uh, what we are discussing as part of an improved developer experience to add yet another tool or some tooling. And so it seems that uh, the risk here is also that we are increasing the fragmentation, adding more tooling, adding more complexity. And this is exactly what we want to, uh, what we want to avoid. 
So what the market, what the market is telling us? So what's the market segmentation about the developer experience and the tooling related to developer experience? Because what I'm focusing now, it's more about the tooling because of course, uh, there's not a magic bullet or something that we can discuss about culture and things like that. But again, in terms of tooling, uh, a defined market segment uh, uh, doesn't really exist yet, even if things are evolving and pretty fast. And uh, some analysts are starting to see some uh, uh, loud request in terms of developer experience uh, because simply it is affecting the business in the way that we were discussing. If you didn't have the chance uh, to look at, the, at this uh, Gardner um, research, I would highly recommend to go through it. This is really interesting. It is focused about the internal developer portals. We will see in a couple of slides what the internal developer portals are. Uh, but it's a pretty interesting example of attention that are that what honestly are recording from the market. And it is a good very pretty good insights about the uh, tooling. Uh, existing outside and in the market uh, to address the developer experience, in this case for internal purpose. In terms of offering, what we, um, what we, we see is that uh, there is a clear market segment that is uh, emerging. It's, it's about the internal developer platform, the so-called IDP. Uh, they, of course, are targeting the developer personas of an organization, so they are more for internal purpose, uh, built to uh, build, uh, of course, as a simplification of uh, the usage and of uh, some of few or some services. So they are often defined by uh, a portal plus a service with one goal in mind, abstracting the complexity of the usage of the services. Most of the times, uh, uh, this, uh, mm, this type of offering in the market, they exist uh, some, honestly, the majority are there. Uh, I don't want to quote them because I don't want to, I mean, but you will find, easily find them if you search for internal developer platform. Uh, most of the time they are addressing the DevOps uh, experience because DevOps uh, as methodology is pretty complex and, and it, it is a key pain point uh, to be abstracted and simplified. But uh, as part of the, of, the, of the current offering, there are also developer portals. So portals, they are horizontal to the various services. They are literally single pane of glass that, again, are abstracting and making simpler what today is pretty complex, and they live on top of the services. Uh, honestly, Backstage is, is an example of this, uh, of developer portal, and we have many other examples of developer platform, many there are different examples of developer platform. This is to give you uh, an idea of what is existing outside. Conscious of time, uh, let me also discuss with you the role of open source. Uh, I mean, uh, this is this is one of my one of the slides that I enjoy most, and this is something that I also discuss in, in several conversations about the value of open source. I won't go in detail of every item here because it's too complex, but let me say this. The role of open source in the developer experience is the same uh, as uh, other any other market. So it is an alternative. It is a, a, a potential solution to make the developer excited and help them in doing better their, their job. Uh, of course, I am an open source enthusiast, so it's clear also what I support and enjoy most. Uh, but again, in terms of business opportunity, the open source is uh, uh, the open source offering is, is the same as. Uh, in other areas. So the open source offering is central, 
but it is complementary to uh, in the known open source offering because it's clear that in some cases, and it's absolutely fine that in some cases, some company, some companies may uh, prefer to have some uh, identified and reliable uh, supplier and vendors, and they want to trust in some vendors, and they prefer to rely on them instead of uh, uh, rely on un- not well undefined um, ecosystem of uh, uh, of a community at this point in time. But again, it is clear that open source has a role in the market, and also in terms of developer experience, is exactly the same. It is central, and it does provide value equally to to other other uh, segment uh, and offering of the market itself. Okay, I'm a little bit out of time, so I would like to ramp up and summarize what we discuss. First of all, we saw uh, we defined uh, the developer experience, and we discussed also why developer experience is important. We discussed also about uh, some uh, overall solution and what the, it is in the market, and a little bit of touch of the role of the source. Finally, let me share some thoughts about uh, the direction of tribal, at least uh, from from us at Spotify and myself, uh, for sure for for myself, starting exactly from the where I started from the beginning. So the mission of PDX it is about speed up, speed up Spotify and developers uh, by providing teams with a simple, consistent, and delightful experience. I think that simple and consistent now makes more sense to you because simple is closer to the sim- so simplifying the complexity consistent and it's more about reducing the the fra- fragmentation and honestly uh, my goal and our goal is also the third part delightful because uh, our real goal is now in a ha- ahead is one and unique and only is make the developer happy because this is what we like and this is what we love. Thank you very much.